This video covers the D3 update selection. The structure of this video is as follows. D3 data operator revisited, D3 update selection, D3 exit selection, D3 enter selection, and the summary. All right, let's get started. D3 data operator revisited. The D3 data operator joins the specified array of data with the current selection. The specified value is an array of data values, such as an array of numbers, objects, or a function. If a key function is not specified, then the first datum in the specified array is assigned to the first element in the current selection, the second datum to the second selected element, and so on. When data is assigned to an element, it is stored in the property underscore underscore data underscore underscore thus making the data sticky so that the data is available on reselection. Using a new barebones HTML file, we select the body and insert a paragraph element. As you can see, the paragraph element has been inserted into the HTML document. Let's attach an array of three numbers to this paragraph element. You can see that the first property of the paragraph element, the data property, is array brackets 3. When we click into the array, you can see that the three numbers from our array, you can see the three numbers from our array as well as their respective indices. D3 update selection. This selection represents the DOM elements from the prior selection that were successfully bound to the specified data elements. Again, this selection represents the DOM elements that were successfully bound to the specified data elements. The update selection also contains a reference to both the enter selection and the exit selection, which are both covered later in this video. Revisiting the example from the D3 data operator video, let's attach an array of one number to a selection of two paragraph elements. Using the barebones HTML file, we select the body and insert a paragraph element with class P underscore 1. Then, we insert another paragraph with class P underscore 2. And, as you can see, two paragraph elements have been inserted into the HTML document body. Now, let's attach an array of one number to the selection containing two paragraph DOM elements. First, select all the paragraph elements. Then, chain the data command to the selection with an array that contains the one data element. This command returned a selection array containing the one paragraph element. This selection is called the update selection. When we click into the array, you can see that the paragraph P underscore one is the only paragraph in the selection. When we click into the paragraph, you can see that the first property is now the data property and this data property contains the number 1. Since there was only one data point, it was bound to the first DOM element. So the selection returned is that of the first DOM element because it was the only DOM element successfully bound to data. The DOM element that was not bound now exists in the exit selection. We cover the exit selection next. D3 exit selection. Once the data operator returns the update selection, we can follow the reference to the exit selection. The exit selection returns the DOM elements from the prior selection that were not successfully bound to the specified data elements in the data operator. Note, the exit selection method is only defined on selections returned by the data operator. We revisit the example of attaching an array of one number to a selection of two paragraph elements. We insert two paragraph DOM elements. Next, let's attach the array of one number to the selection containing two paragraph elements. This time, we assign the selection return, the update selection, to a variable called update selection. This selection is called the update selection. This command returned a selection containing the one paragraph element. We check to see what is in the update selection variable by clicking into the array. When we click into the array, you can see that the paragraph P1 is the only paragraph in the selection. 
this is expected. Now let's follow the reference from the update selection to the exit selection. To follow the reference, we use the chain syntax to select the exit selection. The selection that is returned is the selection of DOM elements that were not successfully bound to the data in the data operator. When we click into the array, you can see that the paragraph P2 is the only paragraph in the selection. This makes sense. The first data point that was bound to the first DOM element in the prior selection was P1. So P2 did not get any data points, which is why it is in the exit selection, which you can see by the fact that the first property of the paragraph is the access key. Now we've covered what happened to the second paragraph element when there were more DOM elements than data points. And that is the basics of the D3 exit selection. Next, we cover what happens when there are more data points than DOM elements. D3 enter selection. Once the data operator returns the update selection, we can follow the reference to the enter selection. The enter selection returns the placeholder elements for each data element for which no corresponding existing DOM element was found. Note, the enter selection is only defined on selections returned by the data operator. Also, the enter selection only defines the append, insert, and select operators. Once one of these three operators has been used, you can modify the contents of the selection. Let's attach an array of two numbers to a selection of one paragraph element. We insert one paragraph DOM element with a class of P1. Next, let's attach an array of two numbers to this paragraph element selection. This time, we assign the selection return, the update selection to a variable called update selection. This command returned a selection containing the one paragraph element. This selection is called the update selection. We check to see what the update selection variable is. When we click into the array, you can see that the paragraph P underscore one is the only paragraph in the selection. This is expected. Where did the second data point go? Now, let's follow the reference from the update selection to the enter selection. To follow the reference, we use the chain syntax to select the enter selection. The enter selection returns the placeholder elements for each data element for which no corresponding existing DOM element was found. When we click into the array, we can see a JavaScript object. When we click into the JavaScript object, we see the data point that we were missing, the number two. This second data point was bound to a JavaScript object to serve as a placeholder element since no corresponding existing DOM element was found. Lastly, let's take a look at how most D3 visualizations are constructed. Usually, they start with an empty HTML document that contains no DOM elements other than the HTML head and body tags and a JavaScript link to the D3 library. In this case, we select all the paragraph elements. As there are none, we are attaching our data array to the empty paragraph selection. Now, let's follow the reference from the update selection to the enter selection. As you can see, D3 created five placeholder elements for each of the five data points that were not bound to any existing DOM elements. And that is the basics of the D3 enter selection. The summary. This video covered the D3 data operator revisited, D3 update selection, D3 exit selection, D3 enter selection, and the summary.